Yeah, earlier this year, you guys made the decision of removing. Was it? Is it? No, it was a uh, damage points. points. Survival no, points. It wasn't damage. Yeah, survival survival points. Points. yeah, you made the controversial <laughs> decision of removing survival points from the PvP games. I have two questions based on this. I'm gonna confirm it right now. Hades Havoc will not be returning to main events uh, because no. we have essentially served Minecraft event games. Essentially, need to be non-perishable in a way. Like, sometimes they can get stale, but, like, you want to be serving up non-perishable food, like, non-perishable games. We just told them to go out into the wilderness and bring us back some players, you know? And they, they did, and they, they did really well. Terribly. I sang it terribly. Hey, you know, like the tyrant in hell who's a hit with all the ladies. Ladies. All right, lads, welcome back to Inside MC, the podcast where I sit down with an amazing guest, or in this case, guests every single week. And this week, I am joined with some of the team from Pandora's Box, more specifically, Color Bolt, Danny Pistachio, and Rosendo. Welcome in. Hope you're all doing well. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having us. I, I am recovering from being unwell, so the intro is very mid, uh, not really up to my normal standard. But we're making history today because this is the first ever three-person podcast, or like three guest person podcast. Have you ever done a two-person? podcast yes i have done it with both uh sandwich lord and phase ray and space brownies and masky z and i believe there's another one but damn we're making history here this we are I mean, we're yelling we're, on. yeah we're totally gonna be talking over each other like the entire podcast it's gonna be great we're gonna love it that's fine and for anyone who can't differentiate voices i'll let you all introduce yourself separately and then hopefully people can remember who's who because i'm not putting like it's too much editing to to specify who's <laughs> talking who so we'll yeah for you guys firstly color bolt uh, th th this is the rundown as soon as i say your name this is what i want you to to do uh introduce yourself so who are you what do you do and uh, what do you do within pandora's box and if you have a fun fact either about yourself or in general color bolt you first hello my name is color bolt also known as isaac i'm 22 and i'm the lead developer from pandora's box who also worked on many things for pandora's box dragon pen there you go danny Hey guys, I'm Danny Picaccio, or more easily known as Danny Pistachio. Um, I'm the one of the project leads for Pandora's Box, and I'm also the head uh, artist and now 3D modeler as well. Hey, so yeah. And Rosendor. Hi, uh, I'm Kelton Stucky, also known as Rosendor, and uh, I do the music for Pandora's Box and also was the director for Dragon Fit. There we go. And I hope you're all doing good today as well. Right. Doing great. Doing great. We are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I should have been more prepared for this because I have like, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys questions. Questions, but the issue is I don't really have like specific to the person questions because normally when I bring people on it's like creator right but this time it's like we're mm -hmm. talking to you I'm talking to you about the tournament so I'm just gonna I guess we're just gonna have a conversation and whoever is more fit for answering it steps up to the yeah play. we can yeah we can that figure works. that out pretty easily yeah for sure yeah developer insight you know we got you we got you I guess the first thing then is what is the origin of well we'll go back to the very very start so before pandora's mm -hmm. box came frost wars right <laughs> yeah was yes that? that was an event that we ran for five months between august and december 2021 by an organizer we don't speak of what was it was basically origin? um it was made off of a desire to host an event that was like similar to mcc so it was hosted in someone else's vision and it had a lot of games in it like you said there's so like sg there was disco fever speed run there were a lot, a lot of similarities to Pandora's box actually but it was all like games that were made to be like fun and also competitive a little bit as well it's still kind of a thing we keep up to this day and also the specialty of running only on Sundays I've uh, I've casted a Frost Wars it was the uh, Lantastic event yeah that was a oh, rerun yeah. of the final Frost War event uh, Frost War 7 which originally was the December the Christmas event for 2021 the final Frost War and then although we have rerun it many times that mm. came to an end and Pandora's box got started right the Phoenix from the Ashes yeah yeah yeah, so we we held like a we had like actually a vote within the player server. We had a few different names being tossed around, and Pandora's Box actually won the vote. I believe it was actually pretty close, though. I don't remember the exact numbers, but Pandora's Box won. I think it was like a sweep. It's like a fifty-five or sixty percent like margin or something like that. So we ended up renaming the event Pandora's Box. Like, what was the I guess what was the origin of changing the whole tournament? Because obviously, like Pandora's Box is an entirely separate one, right? Or is it was it just originally a name change? It was mostly a name change. Um, many of the things were carried over like you know games like speed runs travel games the oh, i believe i don't think any maps were actually carried over aside from like disco fever i think and maybe one other i can't remember but everything else was basically made brand new but it was still like the same games but of course everything was rebranded to mostly to distance itself from the past and because we had like the new master garf organizer so because i think the new era deserved a uh, new name a lot of new developers too 
Yeah, and I think we announced it during uh, Idiot Con, right? Back That's in, correct. Back in 2021. Yeah, What's Idiot Con. <laughs> oh, it's an online it, convention we held. <laughs> we need to come to next Idiot Con happening uh, <laughs> at, at a date. At a date. <laughs> 2027. Is, is Idiot Con like specifically Minecraft, or is it just like a whole convention? Yeah, it's just a base. That's just about like our own servers and online games. Oh, so it's uh, that we announced. So we had the way had like trailers and stuff for it, as well as showing off stuff in game. Like we announced that Gauntlet from war at the time was actually going to be was added to the main server it can now be played yeah and, and then um i remember we we changed our our name from idiot games before to growing studios now um and I, I think we did that about a year ago so i guess we'd be what grunt con now <laughs> is that what yeah. we're doing con yeah I, i'm gonna be so honest i always for some bizarre reason forget the grunt studios is a thing not in a way of like they're like uh, as like an arrogant sense it's more so like i i remember they existed for this podcast but until you mentioned idiot con i was like i completely forgot grunt studios is like what Ha- owns or in quote unquote like owns Pandora's box. So when I went into asking what was the origin of Frost was, I should have actually been asking what was the origin of Grunk Studios. Well, we could talk about that too. <laughs> yeah, long story short, a goat in French class. Okay, that's no context. <laughs> that's the that's the origin. Was that the, the, is that the high school story that you said you're doing three words? <laughs> was that a separate yeah. one? Well, that's kind of it. It's not how we met, but it is our, our namesake. Yeah, I always whenever you. I whenever I tell people about our like origin story, or I guess like the the developer origin, it, it almost sounds like fake. You know, you hear the, you hear the stories about people who are like these these two guys they met in high school and in their parents' garage they built a multi billion dollar company, right? And you're like, okay, well that's obviously fake. They probably just like knew each other from high school and had an idea. But like for those who don't know, me, Isaac, and Kelton all actually like went to the same high school. We were all high school friends, and it just so happens that. We we all just had like a vision and filled ch- like we each filled a part of what makes development isaac with micron coding uh me with doing art and direction and then kelton uh music and also all three of us at the same time we're all just really passionate about game design so you put that all together it just seems fake like yeah right three guys who met each other in high school just so happened to make the pandora's box team but no they really did it's not crazy though that like all three of you were so interested in minecraft and you went to the same school for instance like my my schoolmates quote unquote schoolmates like i'm 21 years of age now i don't talk to anyone from my secondary school and when i say i don't talk to them i mean there's like two people who we check up on each other like every six <laughs> months but yeah yeah, yeah. For the most part, I don't talk to any of them, and we had like a phase where we played Minecraft, but little did they know I actually really enjoyed Minecraft, whereas they all just played it during COVID for like four or five weeks and then gave up on the server. Mm-hmm. So it, it's very rare that you find three people who you become close with, and it's like you all have the same interest of Minecraft specifically, if that makes sense. And then yeah, we got kind of lucky. I, I was, I would say that like it was, it's just crazy, you know, to think about because I think Isaac and I met even before high school, I think we, we met in like grade seven and, and, you know, just seeing how just the, the events that kind of led up to what created, um, you know, idiot games in the first place was, I think just kind of a happen chance. I think, you know, some, some weird things like the, you know, the pandemic of course had some, had some effect, but also just like random things. Like I just, Danny, Danny was talking to me in like some class and he's like, Hey, you know, Isaac is a server and you should join. Cause I, you know, I was talking to him how much I like building in Terraria or something like that. And and, uh, and and so I just hopped on the server and I remember I made like Danny get a bunch of like wood for me or something. Oh, you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, all I was, that's all I was to him, by the way. Like he didn't, that's all I was to him. Wood getter. <laughs> he is my wood collector. And then I built the houses and, and they uh, were nice houses. So I did it happily. So you've always yeah, been a just... good team is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is, I guess, for the purpose for someone who has absolutely zero clue what we're talking about and is listening to this podcast just because they love Inside MC. What is Crunk? Studios. Well, there's a couple different definitions of Grunk Studios, but there's really just two ones that are really important, although they are kind of the same thing now. Um, Grunk Studios is mostly known for being a Minecraft, like a Discord server, which hosts games like Counterpush, which we put a lot of work into, well, maybe not during Dragon Pit, but before and after, as well as like our main development hub area, like that's where testing is held, that's where dev talk happens most of the time. It's like our main development area, and also a Minecraft server that's connected to. We also have like an old, like old the old mini game server which kind of still runs but we don't really update it anymore the archive server but growing studios is also kind of just us three as well in a way as it's like refers to like both the company or if you want to call it a company or referring it to just us three like as like coders like as a team of like people who make games as well so it's kind of both the discord server and also like just other three of us working together on games 
I'd like to say it's a pretty like company vibe. It reminds me a lot of uh, Coppola Media, which is, as you all know, is, is a company as well. It gives me very much those vibes. Yeah, you know, I think I think like with Growing Studios, um, like it's 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 much more. I would say not not necessarily like a company, but much more of like a partnership because I think fair, it was yeah. just kind of like a thing that we created because we wanted like a name to be associated with all the stuff that we did because we had you know this a bunch of umbrella like games and things like that that we'd we'd work on like all these projects from like the early days with like sneak and seek oh we could get down a whole rabbit hole about seek, sneak and seek but probably wouldn't have time for that um counter push and then you know pb and all of these projects uh we kind of wanted to to kind of get a name um for the for the group and actually i think it it originally came from um our, our old like just friend group server during the pandemic that we'd play like among us and stuff on called groink and when we were trying to come up with a rebrand we were just like oh yeah you know <laughs> groink is kind of like a funny name and yeah. uh you know kind of represented our friend group in a way and so we we use that as our as our kind of our name and, and branding for the partnership i know this is about pandora's box but i do want to say that counter push contenders is really good like obviously from casting out time Thank with joe i very much appreciate it like that is a very very good um i guess on quite event how comes you guys don't like i mean maybe you do and maybe i'm just missing it missing it but how comes you guys don't push that as much as you do pandora's box is it like you enjoy cpc but pandora's box is like your child or if if you get well what I mean. the other cpc around, and right? pandora's box were actually born pretty close together i can't lie like they were both born like within two months of each other i think oh, the yeah. first cbc was like january whereas the first pandora's box mm-hmm. event was in march of the same year um cpc is more that it's a bit harder to watch in like an event mm-hmm. stance we we recognize that it's probably not the best viewer experience rather than it like playing it is probably a lot of fun we've never been able to play ourselves besides kelton a couple times but again you know, we've never been able to play but we can imagine what it must be like but from a viewer standpoint it is a little bit harder to watch if you're not in the grand finals mostly because of the tournament structure because the games are very long i'm sure as we've all experienced is like mm-hmm. you win a game and you have to like if you win your game really quickly you're then waiting for a while while other games finish like if you're in a best of three and you win your two maps immediately and now you have to like watch or if you're watching a streamer you have to watch them idle in a lobby for like 30 minutes yeah we, we recognize it's not the best viewer experience unless you're in like the grand finals on sunday which only like two out of the eight teams make it to so and, and, and you know i think you know just to just to add on to that I think because the game and its viewer experience is so kind of mixed, because I think if you understand counter push, it makes the game a lot more interesting and enjoyable. But if you like got a bunch of streamers or whatever, and you really tried to plug counter push tenders as like this big event with a bunch of big creators, I think most of the viewers just wouldn't understand what's going on. You know, it'd be like expecting somebody to know what was going on at Worlds for League of Legends who had never played League of Legends. You know, it'd just be really hard to like get people invested because they'd be like, I have no idea what's going on. Like I just see particles flying all over the place. You know, people wouldn't. <laughs> really get the crazy plays or what we were saying you know they just be like this is cool but i don't know what's happening you know <laughs> sorry extremely off topic but i accidentally showed up at league of legend worlds the other day i don't know how i did it oh. um mm-hmm. i just went to get food with my partner and then we saw like a red bull stand so i went over to get to fr- to get a free red bull and then cpk was just there streaming so showed up on stream fire so when you win up it's funny uh, no i think i think cpc as well like i would I, I mean i understand why you don't fully push it because of the factors you mentioned there which make 100 percent and then even from casting it like we did me and joe kind of did a decent amount of research but even then like we kind of ended up subbing in on a team <laughs> while we were casting uh, <laughs> yeah so- it happens a lot <laughs> yeah. a lot of there's there's always a lot of sub like that in the event like much more than any other event mostly because it is a multi-day format as well the chances of everyone being there for both days which to be fair only only like a third or i guess like a third of the teams make it to the last day but still oh yeah. yeah you're basically dealing with like 11 full rosters showing up on the day of the collectively between saturday and sunday so i, I just think just that's a like a fully fledged tournament event like maybe just one month you made it like a proper professional pro like like a rainbow six cg sports like i know they're live right now how they do it or like thing i i obviously understand why you don't do it but I'd, I'd love to see it one day if it was ever possible yeah the, the one big barrier this is probably the last thing i'll say about counter push contenders but the one big barrier of that is mostly other events taking up the schedule yeah. if we theoretically had ever if other events all just ceased 
to like schedule events, we would totally do it. But getting like people, especially creators who'd probably want to play in other events like Block Wars, you know, Mayhem or whatever, getting them to play in Counter Pretenders and having to like basically bar them out of other events would just be like probably a, a no deal. It just would not be yeah. a good deal for them, really. Unless we put like a prize pool in, but that has like many other issues that I won't get into today. So <laughs> it's more yeah. just availability. Like I've, I admit, I've sometimes came up with like fantasy schedules where I'll like write up like a schedule of like how I would schedule it over the course of a month or two. And of course, it never happens because other events will always like strike right through it. So that's kind of mostly the reason why it's kind of hard to do that. But that's mostly regarding counterpush contenders yeah. versus like Pandora's box where it's just a three hour slot on a Sunday. Sorry, I didn't mean to go so like fully into it. It's just because it links into Gronk Studios and eventually into Pandora's box because it's all this kind of same idea and run by the same people. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. No, sure. just to, yeah, I, it, to me personally, it feels like it links into stuff and because a lot of people probably don't know what counterpush is uh, in like in, in the sense of your tournament, that's why I kind of wanted to shed a bit of light on it. On this yeah, podcast. no, that, that was perfect. That was really good, I think. So Pandora's box, I mean, the main thing that people are going to want to listen to today is about Dragon's Pit, but I still have a few general questions about Pandora's Box before we get into that. That's why timestamps exist, because if people don't care about this part, <laughs> they can just skip over it. Uh, so, Pandora's Box. Firstly, I know you all mentioned uh like your roles at the start of what you do within the pb team this is it's, it's like a slightly weirder question i don't know if you'll be able to answer it but i want to ask it anyways what are each of yours biggest impacts over the years during pandora's box if you have one like what is one moment during pandora's box where like it's stuck with someone or it's stuck with you and you're like yeah that was because of me specifically me is there any moments like that from it, any of you i mean for me it would be hard to pin down a specific moment because i do mostly all the dev work and i mean I mean, a lot of it is basically it's not the same obviously it's different like making a new game is different and you know to be honest like hyperdrive and speedrun are basically the same code to be completely honest as well as like some other like racing games are all pretty much the same code so just coding everything just making it all work it's kind of hard to pin down a specific impact point so i think it's kind of just more consistently being always there to code things for the whole event that's a good answer though to be fair that's what I said. I wasn't sure if you'd, any of you'd be able to answer the question specifically. I was just like, yeah, no. More just a I, I think I think it's a really interesting question. It's a really good question. I I think it's it's hard for me to answer. But I think if I was to like you know kind of pinpoint something, I think definitely it would probably be when I released the first. Um, album of the pb soundtrack and i you know kind of just did that as like of course i've I've liked music for a long time but it was my first time actually doing anything that was like a completed work and wasn't just kind of you know just drafts of ideas and things like that and just the the response and the positive response to the to the album and what people were saying and you know listening to and loving the soundtrack was just a really cool feeling you know to experience have you ever thought about for april fools singing over the soundtracks oh god <laughs> uh, <laughs> i don't i don't know if anybody would want to hear my singing but I I point of an april fools on april fools <laughs> yeah yeah, like, that'd be yeah you know that'd be a good idea I'll do I'll do the I'll do the Temple Burnout remix sing over oh my. my dub. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, what I'll do. April first falls on a Tuesday, so you could have your event on Sunday, the thirtieth of March. Have I ever done True. that? Yeah, I have done that. Okay, yeah, no, that is right. Yeah, just for just for people's, you know, I don't want to break people's ears before the event. You know, that would that would. <laughs> <not work>. <laughs> <laughs> Unironically, people would probably <laughs> actually love that. Like, they'd probably <laughs> genuinely love if all the, like, especially the streamers, if you didn't mention anything about it anywhere, but in this podcast, and if it actually happened, and this, like, you look, you go into, um, and I can't think of a name off the top of my head, I'm blanking on the PB name, sorry. Uh, I know them, I just, right now, in this instance, I'm blanking. <laughs> um, but if, like, you go into one of the games and you just hear singing over the soundtrack and said while people are trying to communicate, <laughs> and it just slowly oh, gets why? louder and louder and louder and louder. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, nah. <laughs> I, I think that'd be funny, personally, but, you know. The idea, the idea is death. Yeah, I think ultimately, though, for that question, though, um, it is kind of hard for us to pinpoint something just because we've all been so active in development. Uh, like, if I want to answer myself, for example, like, anyone who's, like, read my bio, I've, like, project lead, genesis organizer, testing manager, text artist, and, like, even more. Like, I've done, I've, I think I've dabbled in almost, if not every aspect of PB at some point. Um, I don't think I've, I've never written a music track myself or, like, done a full game coding, but, like, I've, I've helped with, um, like, uh, helping Isaac watching the code or like telling Kelton like what I wanted for one of the songs um but I guess the the one the one project that I did have really a big lead on and something that is kind of my child in Pandora's box is Trials of Fire that was the first game that I like took a full lead on I've had leads on other projects like SG Sky High um 
other stuff, but House of Fire was the first game that I kind of from scratch led its full development. So especially seeing that game, what was it? I think it was PB12, yeah, that it came out. And then seeing the reception of it, people really liked the team game aspect. It was like really good for me. What are each of yours favorite games? Like if there's one game that you could play. Oh, well, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that, 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 that felt like an obvious answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, <laughs> frame one, bro. Uh, for sure for me, it's Hades Havoc. The the new game I released during Dragon Pit. Um, For sure. That's cheating. Like let's rule out Dragon Pit. I know, I know it's cheating, okay? okay? But it's my favorite. I have to add her out to sleep. And if I, and if <laughs> I like, ruled out Dragon's Pit then, just from regular ooh. Pandora's box, if you had to choose. <sighs> See, I think I think my favorite game ever in Pandora's Box, and I'm definitely biased on this, was Capture Point when it had the zones, like all those little mini zones all around the map. That was that, that was, was fun. Really fun. It was um, so fun. But probably from a viewer standpoint, I think I think one of my favorite games to watch for sure is Hyperdrive. Just I think I think really? just watching people fly around and especially when people fail and they get and you get their funny reactions. Like it's I think that is just hilarious to me on rewatches just to see how people uh, you know. <laughs> fail i guess is kind of the, the more more part i enjoy about that not to say i hate watch or anything but you know i was expecting to say challenge chase to be honest yeah i, challenge chase. I think I like challenge, challenge chase is so fun to play like i think I those round robin games i do too oh my god playing playing challenge chase is like so fun but i think from a viewer standpoint oh, i think yeah. round robin games i don't know yeah. i just think they're it's it's kind of like uh they're the most fun to play but also kind of the least on the watch to a degree yeah true. um to be honest i gotta go with a fan favorite because it was an idea that I came up with entirely in my head by basically merging two ideas together. I gotta go with the good old Temple Lockout from 2023. That's a good one. Mining, yeah. all, mining all those zones and also a Battle Royale in the same game I think was actually ended up a lot better than I even thought it would originally. Especially even the Dragon Pit implementation too as well was really good with mm -hmm. like the new Neo Neo, Neo Centaur, Neonopolis map. Uh -huh. I just think that like the way you mine the zones and also have to focus on the battle making it so you have to like not only rat well or fight if you want to fight or rat but also have to like pay attention to the zones around you zones and rooms around you in the words of dj gigalord you know <laughs> you got to pay attention to everything i think just works out really well from gameplay and is also really fun to play and also fun to watch from a viewer perspective and also extremely fun to spectate it actually, I think SG is a little bit better, mostly just because you can see everything a bit more easily. But from a spectating standpoint, Temple Lockout is a very, very solid second place spectating. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Which is basically our perspective during the event. So I do have to be a bit biased towards the spectator perspective. <laughs> not of the not of the player spectating, but of like the actual in-game spectating. Yeah, and the stream spectating. I have a very controversial question. <gasps> and I Ooh. mentioned about survival games. And uh, recently, I say recently, I believe it was this year earlier this year you guys made the decision of removing was it is it no it was a uh damage points you made the controversial <laughs> decision of removing survival points from the pvp games i have two questions based on this the first one why'd you do it i could actually well, go into this pretty well if you wanted <laughs> yes um <laughs> personally Personally, I think it was one of the best decisions we've ever made for PvP games. Um, I've had very, very long arguments with several people about logistics and the mathematics behind each of the points of uh, these PvP games. But ultimately, um, it just creates a more viewer-focused game. Like, the thing is, in nor if survival games has survival points, I, I get it, it's in the game. But if there is survival points, people are going to play to that advantage. It doesn't matter if you have billion people watching you. The, the point is, people want to win and people are going to play every advantage that they have. So players are naturally going rat for survival points. Um, not only does this hinder map design, because then it means we have to specifically make every area not, you know, it, with Gulag, it's so bad because you can just go on top of a tree and sit there for eight years. It's horrible. So it hinders map design, but that's kind of just more of a small aspect. It's really just, um, we really, really dislike the fact that you can be rewarded for something you did not contribute to. Um, we think that it, it didn't really make sense that a fight happening across the map is rewarding a team that did nothing, who's, you know, ratting somewhere else. Um, and then when it comes down to more of the logistics and the mathematics behind the points, you have to remember that it's kind of psychological. A lot of the reason that people like survival points, aside from uh, 
having something extra to do besides fighting is that they can their points the points of the lower placing players will look better um like a, a, a low placing player will have more points but inversely a top placing player is also being rewarded more that's the problem top players at the end of the day they're going to survive till the end of sg right so what happens is if you're giving everyone and i mean everyone who's alive points for someone else dying whether or not they contributed or not then all you're really doing is just giving more points to the top ranks anyways since you're giving basically everyone points um it sure it looks better for the lower placing player to have 50 points instead of four points but you're also giving the top placing player those points as well so it's not really fair people think it's fair because they they're getting points for survival but it's not actually fair in practice because those points that they're getting being awarded to everyone else yeah if you couldn't tell danny wrote his master's thesis on uh damage i like. really did i have had <laughs> yeah. so so many arguments about this and every time and i i get it though like there there is really good arguments against i'm not gonna say that it is flawless game design and we have cracked the the master code behind we cracked the code. We, like, we, yeah, we cracked the master code behind <laughs> the survival game point distribution like no we didn't there were so many flaws of course um if you're a low placing player you're gonna struggle to get points if you can't hit people right but um ultimately though i think there is just more pros than there is cons i think one of the biggest cons i think is people saying that you have to essentially throw yourself into a fight if you want to actually achieve anything which i don't actually think is true because by surviving longer you have more opportunities to kill more people and get more damage and no matter what you do this is completely unavoidable every sg is going to end in a mosh pit 100 percent of the time every sg will end in a mosh pit and in a mosh pit it doesn't matter if you're hell awesome or you have a, a trackpad it doesn't matter hey, if you're hey. in a mosh pit <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry <don't laughs> that, gamers it doesn't matter what your skill level is if you're in a mosh pit you're getting free damage it is impossible to not hit people in a mosh pit you are gonna get free damage so it is honestly you are get if you you are a low placing player and you make it till the end of the game probably getting more points through damage in the mosh pit than you would have gotten through those survival points that you got from doing nothing we've done the math on it before the damage pool i think for sg is i think it's still 3400 or 200 it's something like that that's split between all 32 players well on average if every player did the average it would be like over 100 points per player if every player did the same amount so and considering many people die without doing a single hit of damage in some games maybe not many people but like they'll like they'll be able to do like five or like four or five hearts the person who was attacking them but then they'll just die and then they'll lose gulag considering how much damage it actually takes to reach like triple digits in terms of damage points is not really that much higher than you think like i believe i did the math that on average an iron sword hit is like 13 points or something like that already Jeez, i mean also like a full remember, iron crit you remember also that we now have a system currently where if we we have survival points in quotations essentially what happens in sg is you get survival points but you don't actually get them if at the end of the round or, or yeah if at the end of the round your survive what you would have gotten in survival points is more than what you got in damage points then your points are instead replaced by survival it's called survival compensation and i think it's actually a really genius system because then at least you are rewarded if you um, were able to survive that long but just and couldn't hit anyone yes yeah, so we have a couple of counter measures as well so it, i believe in survival games it's three per player in sky high it's two per player but it actually stops once you're in the final you're in the final eight so the most you can get is like whatever 24 players so even if it, once you make the final eight there's now no more points being given out and compensated and again by that point most players it's pretty rare to get it usually if you get it it means you maybe survived one or two people and then did zero damage the whole game that's usually what it means but these points are like you'll get like maybe like six or 12 or 15 points at best i don't believe i've ever seen someone get more than like 30 points out of it it probably happened i've never seen it though I... which 30 is pretty low for pv can i throw out a weird idea that i've just thought of while listening to you guys talk yeah right, i sure. hear it how many people are in, in uh how many players are there in pandora's box 32 so what if you gave survival points to the people who are in the bottom let's say like 18 oh, no that's not half 16 16 bottom 16 in the specific game well that could introduce a new thing where now seven it would be 17th would be the highest player to get it where 17th could now just outplay 16th pretty easily which would be uh controversial well no but it wouldn't be loads of points it'd be like the people who are in the bottom like thing they just get one extra point <laughs> per survival I don't know. That way, then, one like, you point can, well, yeah, I, mean, I don't know you satisfy the masses by going oh look so 
survival points are back, but in reality, you're just like <laughs> Shane Fire Breath Ben can finally celebrate the return. <laughs> yeah, like, survival you're, you're, points. You're like you're like satisfying the masses, but like by going, oh, you can get an extra what sixteen points if you're in the bottom sixteen. Like that'll make. I, I feel a like difference. At, at that point, you're kind of just jangling keys in front of the, the bottom frags and saying, "Look, look, survive the points." But it, yeah. really, I mean, it's just it's disproportionate, and it's not really like it, at that point that would be purely psychological. It's it's kind of the same as we've made a joke before where if you just gave every player 50 points so that way the lower placing player doesn't look like they have four points instead they have 54 but the top frag also gets plus 50 but they don't even like they won't even look at that like that was a joke we made but like it, it's just it's it kind of just the so, same yeah. where it would be it's like if you know like the, the climate action payment we have in canada here it's basically just like that where like everyone regardless <laughs> of income in our province gets 225 dollars every three months I think it's like more if you have a family, but like every single person gets 225. Whoa, whoa, it's kind of like that. Whoa. Oh, okay, so we're getting deep here. <laughs> it, 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 it was a necessary example, I think, in this case. It was also, irrelevant. My second question was, are you happy like at the end with the change? Yeah. But you've, yeah, you already yes. answered that. So, but just for the listener going, hmm, what was the second question? That was my uh, that was my second question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we could go into Survivor points for a long time, but yeah, I think it's I think we can probably move on from that. We will get into Dragon Pit soon, I promise. But I just want to talk about general Pandora's box before yeah, we get yeah, into. Yeah. That. Good, no, totally. So, how how many months ago was it now uh, when you announced the split? It was in August oh. or July? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, to the remember. players or to the public? To the public. Because it was it was bef- it was after PB thirteen. It was right after PB thirteen. Wait, that's when we announced to the public. Oh, so me... whatever that was. So anyone? I actually don't, I can fact I, check I don't have it in front of me here. I swear, okay. like Dragon Pit, like Dragon Pit development is all a big blur. It just felt like just. Like, we just worked in, like, a huge block of time for, like, seven months. So everything in that seven months, it could be two months, it could be five months. It all feels the same because it was just so heavy in the in the development of that project. Well, But, yeah, we, we announced it before PB13 or something. I'll find June it. June 23rd. Yeah. Oh, never mind. It was on April 17th. I released a podcast with Master Garth. Uh, do you guys know who Master Garth is? <laughs> I watched it. Oh, I've never heard of him. <laughs> well, I've never heard of him. It's a bit, a bit ironic, you don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I watched that podcast with no idea who he was sorry no and idea. Then we talked about pandora's box and they kind of hinted i believe towards like yeah there's literally a timestamp called our take on tournament splits so i i've kind of got their take on it before it was actually announced with pandora's box but i, I, I want to talk to you you guys about it as well uh what was the inspiration behind the split? Because it's it's very clear to a lot of people you went down the Block Wars route, quote unquote the Block Wars route, where mm-hmm. they split between Block Wars and Block Wars Origins, which as a basis of how I see it, which isn't fully truthful, it's just how I say it towards people I'm close mm-hmm. with, is creators and friends. That's the two different splits. Well, Not saying that's 100%, I... I'm saying that's like the, as a rough quote unquote, right? But what was you going to yeah. say? I, mean, I want to hear it, Danny. Uh... I could I could give a little secret. Um, there there was a period very early into Pandora's box where we had talked about a split like really really early on before Block Wars actually did theirs. I don't obviously I don't know if they had planned one before yeah, us. You know so it's kind of a you. which came first the chicken or the egg, right? But um, it was it was a terrible idea. I'm so 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 incredibly glad we didn't do that split. It would have it's just it just was not the time for it at all. Um, the, and also we did get a lot of backlash from the players, understandably so. Like it just didn't make sense at the time. So we never did that split. Split, and then eventually um block wars are split and we were like oh man like we're gonna get cooked for this but after time we saw how well received the block war split was and also how much positive it did for block wars because in in reality it is a net positive one they get to keep growing and two they still you know they still give their event as kind of a love letter to their original players like in in origins they still have all these players who supported them since the beginning that still get to play it's still the same event and they even get to occasionally have some of their friends join in as newcomers so like ultimately it is a net positive like these guys still get to play the event and block war still gets to grow the creator you know as uh, as an event so seeing how well received and how well it worked for block wars it's like okay well now we can actually consider it we just have to make sure we do it at the right time and not at a stupid time yeah yeah and it was also i think just the players were getting benched for so many seasons exactly yeah that it got to a certain point where it's like if you ever want to play again like the best thing we can do is actually split because you know there were certain players that had been benched for like three seasons straight and be being a bi-monthly event you know six months that's half a year that's right that you can't be playing it's just it just kind of got to to where it made just the most sense for everybody where it was like from a growth standpoint and then also just from like everybody just gets to play more right and that was that was nice i think 
for all the players for sure. No. We knew that it would likely have to happen eventually. The only thing I believe we really cared a lot about was making sure it happened before Dragon Pit. Yeah. Because we wanted to make sure that the or, you know, the Genesis players would get to experience it as well. And now was the per that that like when you did it was the perfect time to do it. I believe so, yes. I think so, yeah. See, the thing is, I'm not, like, anti-Split. I've just never really been for it. Like, there's there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. Splits. Like, I have nothing against it. I've just never really liked the idea of, like, splitting rosters into two. It's completely understandable why when you get to a point where PB is and where Block Wars is, where you have people who've been there from the start that you want to still experience the event, like, which is completely understandable. But with, like, for instance, with Mayhem, which I'm player manager for somewhat, mm -hmm. um, it just if it doesn't need to happen, so it's never really been a consideration. They have drafts, right. which is, like, unstreamed which is an on-stream split so technically it has happened but like not in the sense of how you guys have done it kind of thing which you've done it very yeah. very well yeah i think it really mostly does also just come down to what kelvin said where um it wasn't really getting fair for the people who have supported us for so long having to like obviously at the end of the day if you want to grow as an event you have to put the content creators in as a priority right but when you do that, you're benching the players who have been supporting you for so long, the ones who were there from the start. Um, it's not really fair for them. So I think with a split, I think that's why uh, it works so well for us, because now these players actually get a chance to play a lot more often. And I think another reason why it actually worked so well for Pandora's Box specifically, obviously it worked great for Black Wars, but why it was also so good for Pandora's Box is because since we're a bi-monthly event, people have to wait a long time to watch Pandora's Box. Sorry. But this let us post it back to monthly well in quotation since it's technically still it's a rerun but um it is now now people can actually watch pandora's box every month instead of having to wait two months for the next pandora's box yeah it just keeps the quality up and then still has like high volume you know just so people can you know play and watch and yes it's, it's i think it's just kind of good all around for us really quite like it as well because uh i think it was the last mayhem i know it was at the mayhem viewer event it clashed with block wars because there was only four saturdays in a month and one of the saturdays was for mcc rising i think another mm -hmm. one of the saturdays was for twitch rivals but only only left two more saturdays and they were both for block wars so it clashed with mayhem but i quite like how you guys do it by monthly so it only takes up quote unquote takes up one sunday a month and it kind of like i'll take the sunday pill yeah. <laughs> i mean and they very quickly run back to counter push contenders as well that's also important that we uh make sure we have time for that when it eventually comes back yeah. eventually <laughs> yeah so. i took the inspiration for the inside mc events to host them on sundays and i made sure purposely to do this next one to not clash with pandora's box so it's actually the week <laughs> after <laughs> ascension let's go no the week after genesis sorry apologies I still need, I'm trying to remember the names, it's hard, okay? My brain Sorry, remembers stories. a lot of things. You're good. <laughs> uh, what about the name inspiration for them, Ascension and Genesis? What's the deal with that? <laughs> oh, I could get into this one too. Um, so, uh, obviously, we, we didn't want to just do um, Origins for obvious reasons, but... Uh, Isaac actually had the idea that we should have a name for both because obviously we as everyone knows Block Wars as Block Wars and then Block Wars Origins but and Isaac thought it would it was just a better idea to have it um have them each named with their own name and I actually ended up agreeing because when I thought about it I'll give you kind of an example so imagine someone tells you I love Block Wars what are they talking about are they talking about the event or are they talking about Block Wars CC now like imagine someone yeah imagine someone comes up to you and says I love Block Wars Origins immediately on the spot you know exactly what they're talking they're we're talking about the origin side of the event right but when someone just says i love block wars you kind of have to put some context clues together on whether they're talking about the event and it, it, it kind of comes down to the same thing where usually when people want to talk about block wars cc they say block wars cc specifically because it doesn't have a name they have to give it a name so with ascension and genesis we were able to just you know it, it's the same thing really there we just did the work for them so they each have a name um for the actual names themselves <laughs> the original names i had in mind were genesis and echelon because you know like upper <laughs> Echelon. I thought it was a really cool name, but apparently, like ninety percent of the people I asked either couldn't spell, pronounce it, <laughs> or just didn't know what it meant. Yeah. Echelon. It kind of pissed me off. But <laughs> apparently, a lot of a lot of people don't know what echelon means unless you specifically say it in the context of upper echelon. So that got scrapped, and then I eventually I just had the idea of like ascension, like ascendant, ascend, 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 ascension. Why don't we just do that? And yeah, and uh, everyone, I'll, I'll be honest, it was mostly just like me coming up with the names and everyone being like, I don't know, that name sucks. Oh, the other name's good I was like, okay well yeah, why don't you do some this? use of chat gpt at some points as well i can't yeah, it did not give very good ideas i can't lie it gave pretty bad ideas should have been a pandora's box better and pandora's box better <laughs> oh, yeah. true true <laughs> which one is which stay tuned <laughs> that's left for this one to decide oh <laughs> comment down below <laughs> which one is better <laughs> <laughs> yeah for real <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, I mean, it's worked out perfectly because uh, Pandora's Box, obviously, is now a monthly event. Uh, I guess mm -hmm. one more question because I know we want to get into Dragon's Pit, so we will. I, so I, I, once again, I just... <laughs> this is one opportunity to talk to you guys about Pandora's Box while you're all here, so I'm, I'm using it as much as I can. Why uh, was it originally every two months? No, every, yeah, every two months. Um, to be completely honest, it can be pretty much summed into two words. Mental health. Mostly uh, because making you? an event every month is just exhausting on the builders it's it's exhausting on the organizers it's exhausting on me as a coder it's just really exhausting and i feel like most events they're kind of like just kind of like the same thing every month with like maybe another spice or two added here and there we we could easily have added more staff we could have added many more staff would it really have made a better product though honestly probably not it, it would have made it maybe like one or two percent better if we had added a bunch more staff and gone monthly so we decided the best thing we could do for everyone was to move to it originally we were going to do a month and a half format which would have been a bit odd but it was our first plan but we quickly shifted again back to a two-month plan because we realized that the event was just going to be a lot better if we were able to actually take the time we needed take off time take rest days and make sure that we're back in office like i don't know if you've ever saw you ever seen those studies or whatever how like workplaces will try out they'll go from like a five-day work week to like a four day work week and they'll turn out that productivity is like way higher it's kind of like that right i feel like we can do so much more with more time between each event and you know like we totally could add many more staff but i just don't think it would really make anything much better yeah, at all agreed so yeah. let's just we figured we just let's just stick to the staff we i mean obviously we've added more builders but that's separate like let's just stick to the crew we have and maybe add a few more faces but figured let's just take some rest days each month or each every other month and mm -hmm. split the event up yeah and it gave us more time for like counter push projects too and other things that you know passion projects that we had and, and and things like that as well that wouldn't have been possible with that like because i remember during the pb monthly format it was like impossible for any development to happen on other other growing studios games just because it was like so taxing on isaac doing all the coding you know it's like you can't you can't expect somebody to like dedicate after working a full-time job to also <laughs> doing like a second full-time job you know just on coding stuff and so yeah like like isaac said just on a mental health level it was just it was just better for sure you're all volunteer as far as I'm aware, right? That's yeah, correct. It's the same with like the podcast. I mean, I was recording and uploading two podcasts a week for an entire year straight. And the reason, the only reason I saw it out for the entire year was to say I did it for a year straight. Uh, and now, now that it's been, I'm like, is it as much fun as it was? I wasn't really earning any money from the podcast and I've taken up some other hobbies that have like been earning me more money than I have from the podcast. And I've realized all oh, like as fun as it is, there are other kind of opportunities that I could probably take up more. So like I get it with the whole mental health thing is I'm basically saying I relate here in a sense. So Dragon's Pit, I'm going to probably, I'm going to ask a few questions here to try my luck. Uh, if at any point I step out of line, let me know. Uh, I don't think I will step out of line because they're genuine curious questions as opposed to poking, but you'll get you'll see what I mean. Really making it sound worse than it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty hard to focus I on. Got my gun ready, like, I'm ready. Got the firing squad ready. <laughs> the, the first question, <laughs> sure. just to get out of the way, uh was there an attempt at making Dragon Pit sponsored? Um there was a we had a concept of a plan. Uh no, there was really it was really just we we discussed it, but uh, um, our top priority was not on getting a sponsor. Um, yeah. We, if we, if somebody reached out and it was like a more, you know, streamlined process or something like that, uh, probably we would have like totally been down for that. But it was just like with development, we just had no time to think about it, to be honest. It was like we were just so crunched and on, on every, on every side from, you know, the organizing to the development to the coding to building to everything. It was just kind of like a crazy project that, you know, by the time we could even think about it it was like yeah well we just really don't have time to even discuss it you know That's fair. right now that i've got that out of the way uh what <laughs> sorry what was the wh when did the plan for dragon's pit begin uh, september 2022 um oh, and i actually remember i remember that uh because i was sitting outside danny's lecture room i think you're i don't know if it was like a computer science class you were taking or whatever inside the, oh, the yeah. big engineering brick building or whatever. Go to my university he just snuck in yeah, I just snuck in and I was just like, I was just chilling there. And I remember because this class was like an hour and, and something. And I tried to like listen, but like honestly, for me, like a music guy, I could not listen to more than like five minutes of them <laughs> talking about that stuff. I was like, okay, I'm out of here. And, and I remember I was 
I was sitting there and I was like, hmm, Haunted Havoc had been retired just kind of earlier that year. And I was thinking, well, you know, Haunted Havoc is a project that everybody kind of, you know, has like this goal. like a cult following. Like the game wasn't <laughs> perfect. Okay. Like the game had a lot of problems and that's why it was retired. And people voiced those problems. But then for some reason, like after like six months, everybody forgot about all those problems. <laughs> and for some reason thought like the game was perfect or something. And so I was like, okay, well, what if we just like brought back, you know, Haunted Havoc in a way and that's where I started coming up with like this idea of like Hades Havoc and I kind of like started you know experimenting with some ideas and then kind of became something where I, I realized that the event that housed Hades Havoc could only happen once because Hades Havoc is not a sustainable project so then it kind of built into this like dragon pit thing and then I kind of came up with some music for it and, and it kind of just expanded uh, into what it became. And then three years later it was announced <laughs> and we've seen the first one and then Genesis is happening in a week's time from recording this. It's a really weird date, right? We're recording it, then Genesis is happening a week later, then a week later this podcast comes out, so it's all a bit of a weird <laughs> time frame. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, a weird question, but I'm going to ask anyways, why did it take so long? Obviously I've, I feel like it's such an easy answer, but I still want to ask anyways, why did it take two years for this to eventually happen. Why don't we back up a little bit to... I want to push us back to March 2023. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, about a month before PB6, after the grand return, after, like, I think it was a 31 or seven and a half month hiatus from August 2022 to April 2023. Right towards the end of that, we had a meeting at a restaurant in person where Kelton basically... Well, there wasn't a PowerPoint, but it essentially was a, a verbal PowerPoint, basically, of Kelton going over all of his ideas for Dragon Pit and basically what how just basically the plan that it was just said out loud there was no like actual powerpoint or stuff like that but okay. that basically was our big plan and we so we didn't really learn about it that much until that big meeting or well just the three of us at a restaurant and we essentially we were gonna try and push it for august of that year i think or september or october just sometime in like the summer of that month but we realized pretty quickly that that was just kind of not really feasible um so we ended up pushing it to next year which i believe we were originally targeting august like september october but we pushed back to uh november because we realized it was probably the best for everyone wanted the halloween in october yeah yeah it was it, uh, yeah no I, I actually remember that i remember that meeting that was uh, i think i think it was like all the stuff was kind of there i remember explaining the garf fight as well with like the piano build up and everything to like the garf and, and how it would all play out and talking about all the cutscenes and things like that and, and yeah it was it was such an ambitious project that you know really quickly when we were getting into like real pre-development kind of realized oh yeah you know this is gonna be this is gonna be a harder project than maybe we anticipated and uh and then i think it we really started ramping up development in probably march of this year i believe um, you, know, you started building around like march to april was when the yeah, building march started to april yeah because i remember i did the, the presentation for the build team in march where i kind of went over everything and we had like this big um presentation on every single game like it was like speed run and temple lockout and and all the kind of themes that we had for everything and then actually fun fact speed run um originally was going to be just like normal speed run and i believe it was scully who in the meeting suggested Suggested that there should be items like Mario Kart. And I remember sitting there and I was like, no, that's actually kind of fire. I was like, that's actually kind of a really good idea. And I'm like, and way more probably way more fun to build. And, and so I remember in that meeting was when I actually changed the idea of speedrun and reworked out how that game would go. And so, yeah, I think right after that meeting is when development really went forward. Um, most of the coding for it wasn't actually started until August. I mean, there was a few very small things done before that, but most of the coding was actually done within two months months of the event on my end personally although of course the building had been it was it was definitely not completed but there were many things done before then so coding really only took about two months but again i wasn't going to start coding till all the building was done because i needed the building to be done before i could code anything um especially for games like hades havoc it would have been really hard to code without the builds being there there's a few things that like weren't fully done when i started coding them but that that doesn't really matter I just had to like had to have everything there so i do believe we did spend the time very well we possibly could have pushed it a month or two earlier, but it likely would not have been a, that much of a better event or probably would have been worse, actually, if we'd mm -hmm. done that. So mm -hmm. I think that the two years we spent, well, really like half a year for most of us, I think was actually very well spent and we got everything out when we wanted to. I think we did a, we did it a good time too. I think yeah, for it sure. was all worth it in the end for everyone to wait that long. It's been pretty hard keeping it a secret, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I uh, will admit there was a very, very small, um, very tiny minor story. Uh, we were doing an escape room when we were in uh, TwitchCon San Diego, and one of the puzzles, uh, there was a book with the word Hades on it. And I was basically telling myself, don't make a Hades joke, don't make a Hades joke, don't make a Hades joke. Even though I almost did to Kelton, I was like, wait, yeah, don't Isaac make a joke looked, about it. No, I, I remember Isaac looked at me and then looked at the book. I'm like, don't say it. Like, don't it was so funny. <laughs> I was like, going to be like, Hades, Hades. Yeah, I was like, just start baking out in the song. I was like, don't say it, don't say it. You know, when the top hat and cane came out and I saw the bow tie, I was like, oh no, this is happening. We went straight into the musical number. Yeah. I, uh, I feel like a really easy question would be, will we see Dragon Pit return again? But I want to I wanna reword it to make it slightly more interesting, for my sake anyways. Will we see any of Dragon Pit um, intrigate? Let me reword that. Will we see any of Dragon Pit like used in the main Pandora's box? Like, will any of the games, will any of the assets, will any of the concept, will you add that? to PB. There were a few minor things that could definitely be added, which I may or may not be able to go into specifics about. There are a few things that I can definitely <laughs> say won't be coming to the main event, um, such as I'm going to confirm it right now, Hades Havoc will not be returning to main events, uh, because no. we have essentially served Minecraft event games essentially need to be non-perishable in a way. Like Sometimes they can get stale, but like you want to be serving up non-perishable food, like non-perishable games. Like SG, you can theoretically run SG as it is with no changes for basically the rest of Pandora's Box's lifespan, and it's going to be okay. Whether people like the game is a different story, but it's going to be still a good game regardless, right? And same for, goes for like Hyperdrive, Chalice. Chalice Chase is definitely going to be able to last forever. Temple Lockout. But with, with Hades Havoc, we've essentially served up a hot plate that has a whole time of one use, basically. It's a one use game. Once you've played it once, you can never really experience it again properly. Like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest, the last few full tests were basically just speedrunning contests of Hades Havoc, because basically oh, yeah, everyone yeah. With, with, a, with a few small exceptions, I believe that we had like one new player in like the last full test or the second last, yeah, no, I remember. We, we took one. all the tests after the first two with like a grain of salt, because we knew those first two tests were the most important for that game because that was where you saw the the real experience that the players yeah. were gonna have for sure yeah and the last it, and basically everything else after that was basically just speed running contests and if we found a bug we fixed it and that was basically <laughs> it we found a lot though we found a lot of little bugs yeah. and we fixed all of them yeah, well, most of them were in the first two or three tests testing. thankfully true, yeah true true yeah. except for one we fixed on like the last day before the event which i don't yeah, know how it lasted that long with only one <laughs> fail or only one yeah, misfire right. and then will we see i guess the more basic question and will we see dragon's pit return and like maybe next halloween uh, so i'll take that question um so given how successful the event was we were totally interested in like doing another event but we don't exactly have a date planned and i think the reason is is just because it's such a demand on the builders and on everybody on the team you know coding um music modeling all of that stuff it's just a lot of time and without a lot of like monetary backing. I think it's just really hard to ask people to give that much time to another event project, you know, because this, I think, yeah, this was probably one of the first events that um, was done in the scene that had been a project kind of created as a one time sort of Twitch Rivals esque type of game or type of event uh, that hadn't been done by like a really big, you know, company. And, you know, we kind of did it out of like a passion project. And I, I know like, a huge amount of credit to the builders who who dedicated like five months of their their lives um to just working straight on this project um but you know that that's where i mean it, it's possible for sure it's just i think there would there would have to be you know i think the context would be very different for a second event such as this that's fair i mean you could always just like i mean, i know you wouldn't want to but as a basis you could always just reuse the event next year anyways right like to put it really, I, no, I, I, mean, I mean, it's I'm re I'm being really arrogant to dev work and build work here. I'm <laughs> saying it's a very basic arrogant sense of you could just rerun the event next year. Obviously, yeah, I know you wouldn't. It'd want be to. like it would be like rewatching Interstellar, you know, for like the second or third time. Like it just doesn't hit the same. I mean, I I, I rewatch the Hunger Games every like six or seven months, and I still love it. <laughs> okay, well that one's kind of a fun one. He's like, oh, he died again. Wee. Wee. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like it would basically be like to bring back the food example. It would basically be like if we put it in the freezer for like a year and brought it back. 
Mike like, yeah. I don't know about you, but like <laughs> some people, and myself included, I don't really like frozen meat that much if it's been frozen already. It just doesn't taste the same anymore, right? Yeah. I, I feel like it would be like if we put like a bunch of, if we put the meat back in the freezer for like a year, or maybe probably six months or however long you can legally hold it for and brought it back and like yeah. de thawed it. Yeah. Like it's just not going to taste the same, I feel like. I, I mean, Hades, ha- there would be many things that would have to be reworked, but even if we like reworked all the Hades Havoc games and stuff like that, then like redid the Gar fight and redid everything, it still just wouldn't really be as special anymore. If we were to do like a new event, it would basically have to be like brand new, like everything. Yeah, brand pretty new much. Idea. We, we could theoretically make a Hades Havoc 2, but it would have to be like very, very different. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and you know, I think that's as, as on the artistic side too, like an event like Dragon Pit was a big artistic vision, I think from all sides, right? I think we put 110% on all teams into, I mean, like, l- let's just look at like, even like Danny, who had never modeled something before, and then went in and like created all these crazy custom models, Mastiga. or like, yeah, Mastiga. like all of these insane things that, you know, like the builders took on, like I knew builders that started as like, you know, kind of builders that only did like basic terraforming or basic structures like wask for example or or um you know blazy who kind of did some little bit of project leads here and there but then became full-fledged like lead builders uh in their own right you know i think everybody just been so much work and of course me and isaac like in the last two weeks just like i, I remember isaac we, it would be like every day we'd just be doing progress checks over and over and over again oh yeah you know so it's like to as that came together and created you know something that you know i, I feel like on the event stage went you know amazing like amazing. honestly I wouldn't change it for the world. It, it was a completed artistic vision. I think something like that for us being a one-time event has made it all the more special because I think that's it's it's legacy, right? It's it's there and it's experienced, and that's what we made it for. It was for the viewers, it was mm-hmm. for the players, you know, to experience something like that for the first time. And I think that's why we probably would never run that exact event again. We would instead, if we were to do it, another one would be com- something completely new and and surprise people in this, you know, yet again, right? I think that's like that would I know, be like right. other events, they do like season one or season two, but like it would be more of it wouldn't be a new chapter. It would be like a whole new book that makes sense we yeah. want to go from breath of the wild to tears of the kingdom <laughs> we'd, we'd want to go more from than like that, actually. fiction we'd want to go pulp fiction to inglorious bastards and that's where <laughs> we're going <you> know? <laughs> like that's that's kind of i think the the artistic idea about events such as this because because it's so it's such a special feeling to see people experience these things for the first time and you know as the developers i think it was it was very unique for us to have created something um that i mean the the reception of it was was really was really nice and the things that some of the creators were saying on twitter um you know was was really rewarding for us to hear and so yeah i think you know if we were to draft up a new one we'd want to go even crazier <laughs> than this one i guess pandora's box has a bunch of very loyal content creators who love the event um and want to sign up and play every single season i have always loved the concept of an event that has team captains and hopefully i haven't been shared misinformation here but i'm pretty sure i'm correct each of the teams for dragon pit had a captain right who chose their team yes yes what we what we did was um originally we had kind of talks with um uh the block wars lead uh wolfie who kind of just gave us uh, some advice for what we should do and i think honestly the best piece of advice he could have ever given us and i'm so glad he gave us this advice was he said why don't you do what you did in ro- or what we did in rookies are you ask the players to, to to come to us and then say I want this team can we have this team in Pandora's box because I think if we hadn't done that we would have gotten maybe half or less than half of what we currently or what we were able to get for dragon pit essentially what happened was we just told the players um this is going to be like a captain system similar to block horse rookies if you if you want to have a team you th- if you have a team that you think is cool come to us tell us the teams and then we'll figure it out so we had like some offers and we kind of just went through the offers like what we think was the most hype what we think was like super cool um i usually like never deal with ascension it's always master gar if i leave that to him but for this one i, I got involved Involved. I was like talking with um I was I was helping get the team for for Bablu, Andres, uh Stu and I was in talks yeah yeah, super ninja and I was in I was in talks with a couple other people that uh, obviously we had a a lot of offers we couldn't do everything but uh Garf obviously big shout out to him he was able to get the majority of the teams um and and a lot of the thing again is that often when you say get us a cool team people don't realize it's like you know at the end of the day we're trying to build off of this event we want something that's hype something that we 
get people talking, right? So sometimes when people see cool, they think, oh, just me and my friends who are already in Pandora's box. Um, but then both me and Master Garf did a lot of work talking to these players, kind of explaining what we wanted, kind of explaining what the vision was, and like maybe like suggesting like here and there, like, oh, this guy's like way bigger on YouTube. You think you can maybe stream on YouTube instead of Twitch? Uh, talking to like uh, here, like some of these guys are some of your friends. Do you think any of them would be interested? And talking like that, and then uh, the players, big shout out to all the the team captains. They were super supportive. They were super helpful, and we couldn't have done it without them. Uh, we talked to those guys. We were able to get uh, pretty insane teams. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is. You weren't misinformed. That is how it happened. It was kind of a. It, it's. It, I don't want to say draft system because draft kind of implies that um, you know you had like a big list of players and each guy had to choose their. You did like a snake draft or whatever. But that's it's kind of I guess yeah. not a Pandora's box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Draft. Draft in the sense of um, we just told them to go out into the wilderness and bring us back some players, you know, and they they did and they they did really well. Yeah. You know, sure. you scratched my back and I scratched yours. You exactly. go out and find three players and I'll give you a slot in the event. <laughs> yeah. As Hades would say. Because, yeah, I mean, I love, like, I love it when there's a team captain and just to see teams like that. And it's why I kind of wanted to do for, like, special events. It's kind of harder with Mayhem because, like, how many kind of quote-unquote special events can you really do and get away with? Um, But, like, with Dragon Pit, it works perfectly. At the same time, though, obviously, a lot of the people who play the regular Pandora's box because of that and the teams for Genesis have been announced and a lot of the names that normally are in Pandora's box weren't in that. uh, Was there, like, was it announced to the players that they, like, did they know? this was gonna happen or was it just like surprise like we're doing team captains not a, like, it's not really a big deal i'm just more curious than anything yeah no 100 we announced it early um yeah we told like it was like right after twitchcon because we met up with a lot of people um yeah. in twitchcon and kind of talked about the event and i think or i think we might have even like released it before twitchcon like when we know the, the trailer, trailer came out on the 15th i believe it was the sunday before we flew it on thursday or Friday yeah that's right for you. and i think garth made the announcement on the monday right so I think the players had like an idea of what Dragon Pit was going to be or something. Um, but uh, it, we weren't like exactly crystal clear on exactly how the event format would work. Like at that point, we hadn't decided a captain system yet. Basically, I think all we said was like, if you're interested in the event, you know, it's going to be like, we're not going to have normal signups. But if you're interested, just like, you know, react to this message or something like that. And and then we kind of went in and decided a few things on like how we were going to do the Genesis stuff and yeah that's kind of our process it was kind of like we sort of went about it as the event evolved and we kind of discussed things with wolfie like danny was saying and, and stuff like that and then it kind of just became what it was and it was about a month before the event that we kind of did the whole captain's thing and yeah so i think that's how that whole process kind of went about oh yeah we we did have, we did announce it to them uh prior i believe i think it was like just a bit after the trailer but we didn't really start to like gather the captain like b- people knew what was gonna happen but we didn't really get we didn't really like go out and start getting offers and like working with the captains until um until a bit later it was about yeah about a month before the event um or i guess about like roughly like three weeks before like team reveals really is when yeah, we started yeah. to kind of uh organize okay it's so, like so far like i think at that point only like three captains had really shown interest um or had actually given us like a full set of players and maybe a couple and a couple others had shown interest so at that point we were like talking with those who had shown interest those who had given us teams and uh, starting to organize like here's like what can you do for us like um you know what what players you have in mind maybe could you do this could you do this and other stuff Does, uh, did uh genesis have captains as well or were they made to uh no actually um here, here's a little also leak not really a leak because i'm fully honest about it but uh the reason that there was no invites to tb14 genesis was specifically because of dragon pit i did not want to add anyone to Genesis because I wanted Dragon Pit to be a love letter to the players who had stuck around with us for so long. I would have thought of it as disrespectful if we had invited new players to PB Genesis and had them play in Dragon Pit over the players who have stuck around with us for so long, right? That's mm-hmm. specifically why I didn't. The reason we had two invites was uh, for sub purposes. Um, uh, and I, I wouldn't have mind them playing. Uh, what ended up happening though with Genesis was I told people balancing isn't really gonna matter too much. Just don't make a super team. And if you have a super weak team, then um, you know you know what you're doing. Like you, yeah. you're, you'll have fun. And but I basically said feel free to four stack. I don't care. Which is why like if you see the Genesis teams, they look very four stacky <laughs> because because they are. I think about six of I think six out of eight of the teams. No, yeah, six out of eight of the teams are four stack. So people can say, oh, it's not really balanced. 
balance. Why is Kel so nerfed? He that's his four stack. He wanted that. Why is Top so Mickey? That's his four stack. He wanted that. <laughs> and we just gave it to him. Like there was like yeah. obviously some duels that I had to like kind of deal with, and like I think one or two duels had to get split, unfortunately, just because I wanted to put you know our biggest supporters in. Um, it was actually really hard to make Genesis teams this time around, and no, not because balance. Like it don't balance didn't matter. It was just because I had to find a way to make as many people as possible happy. I went through fourteen drafts before I finally found something that worked. And I think genuinely, I think this these are the best possible teams I could have done. I don't think there is any situation, any other possible situation that works um, where more people are happy than the current teams. I want to make a note here as a reminder to the listeners. This podcast has been recorded on Sunday the 10th. The event isn't happening till Sunday the 17th. So if any changes are made to the teams or anything like that, this is being purely recorded before the event. So we're talking about the current teams as of Sunday the 10th of November. Right, yeah. Just to make it clear. Just in case anyone subs out, yeah, yeah. anything yeah, happens. Sure. Yeah. Better safe than sorry. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there you go. In so, case, yeah. yeah. In case Danny yeah. ends up subbing in and then it just sounds like an ego boost. Oh, no. <laughs> but he's My plan. Oh, especially that one that I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So what, what? There were six games in Dragon Pit, right? Hmm. There's normally eight in a normal PB, I believe. So what? Mm-hmm. What were the name of the six games in Dragon Pit? So um, we got Speed Run. Uh, I'm just gonna name them how they played out in the event. So yeah, Speed yeah. Run, SD, uh, Hades Havoc, Hyper Drive, Temple Lockout, and Gauntlet were the main six games. And then of course there was the um, one round of Colosseum and then the Gar fight phase one and two are kind of everything. What is Hades Havoc? It's been mentioned a few times this podcast. If someone who doesn't know what it is, what, as a general, what rundown? So basically Hades Havoc is a team puzzle game uh where hades is uh you know this kind of flamboyant character sucks you down to the underworld and then has you doing his bidding where you gotta run around uh this really big like almost like an rpg map in the underworld and go to different monsters and complete their mini games to collect soul contracts and then you bring them back to hades and he gives you some time on your clock so you uh so you don't run out and die and then um he gives you some points too and then if you if you do end up running out of time though or or if you complete all of his uh, all of his little mini games, um, you get to the second phase of the game where you end up in an escape room with your team, and you get to gamble on if you think your team will will complete Hades' challenge. And players actually don't know what the challenge is, so when they go into it, they actually have no idea that it's an escape room. They just kind of are wagering blind, and they get to wager up to half of their accumulated points throughout the underworld section. And then um, if they complete the escape room, they'll get double uh, the points. But if they uh, failed and they lose all of the points they wagered. So that's kind of how the general structure of that game functions. It also opens with a musical number, which is really cool. Are you singing it by any chance? Um, <laughs> I actually can do you sing have. It? I have. I can sing it. I sang <laughs> it. Yeah. I sang it too terribly. I sang it terribly. Hey, you know, like the tyrant in hell who's a hit with all the ladies. Hades. Yeah, you I don't hear this anymore. Yeah, no, I'm no, sorry. I need to. You... Sadly, I didn't. Get to <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. No, uh, sadly, but, uh... I missed out. So I need you to sing it for me, please, just so I can uh, hear it and remind myself, as of course. <laughs> and 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 I remember when um I sent over the vocal uh track because I sang over the original song. I sent it to the. <laughs> to the singer i i got on fiverr and it was so bad like my vocals were so bad i was so out of key and i literally i remember i i messaged her i'm like i'm sorry i cannot sing to save my life i am so out of it she's like oh yeah it was more like it's more about the rhythm and stuff like that i got you and i was like okay thank you but that was yeah i think such a cool way to open up the event or not the event the the mini game and i think the every everybody um in this call here had a huge hand in making that including me uh happen yeah including you including you oh, yeah. uh thank you yeah the 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 moral the moral support for the whole thing couldn't have done it without you yeah i'm pretty sure i didn't message <laughs> any of you once i actually yeah. only just <laughs> met you with it was lovely to meet you by the way i just said that very nice to meet you too <laughs> um but yeah no i think i think that was I, I think originally that idea because that was not in the original plan for dragon pit and it only came about because i was working in in finance before i kind of i 
left that position. And I remember I was driving up and I was doing like this run because there's like a package I had to deliver to somebody 40 minutes out of the town. Like it was a long drive. And remember I was just sitting there and I was kind of humming this thing. And I, I remember I got the melody for Bees Havoc and I was like, something, 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 who's a hit with all the ladies? And I was like, Hades, Hades. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love that so much. I have to have this in the event. So I, I think that's how it kind of all started. And uh, yeah, the rest is kind of history. Fair enough. Making that cutscene took some work as well from all of us. Yeah. I believe a lot of the cutscenes were actually done by Kelton coming over to my house. And we actually used a download of the server to avoid lag issues and to record the cutscenes as well, like in real time on the server itself or on my local download of the server. And then we had all the cutscene pathing and like that. So it basically like followed a spectator mode path, the cutscenes. <laughs> yeah. And then Danny then later put all the models into the game. And also I, te I taught him how to like put the models in with the music and he made it all work really well. Oh, and now I just so. added the lyrics to the bottom. That was basically my role in it. <laughs> yeah, I remember recording those cutscenes. It was so it was so awesome because through this whole experience, like we would go to each other's houses and just kind of like collaborate. And I remember Isaac honestly made probably one of the best cutscene systems in the event space. Like I know a lot of events would probably love to have something so accessible because Isaac made the cutscene system specifically so that I could do it. Like I could record it. And it was amazing. I remember we were we were kind of doing our little cutscene thing. And we were we were um I was sitting at Isaac's computer and Isaac was on my computer just pressing play on the on the music and we'd like record each scene to try to like score it to the song. Oh, it was so funny. And it worked so well. Like, but there were some days it was so long. Like we were there, what, like I think we had like a 10 hour day or something like that. It was like an eleven hour. I think it was a, I think it yeah. was like nine, ten hours without breaks. Or no, it was like nine and I think it was nine and a half without breaks, actually. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but it was I think so it was like fun. eleven, eleven in total. With <laughs> yeah, we were like and, the, and the Dairy Queen run. And the Dairy Queen, because we forgot one of those cutscenes at, at a certain point. We were like, we were going through it, and I was like, Isaac, I'm like, I forgot one. <laughs> we were like, okay, time <laughs> for overtime. So we went to okay, go. Okay, to be fair, I think we actually forgot two more yeah two more after that yeah but so those ones were really easy because we didn't have any filming it was just like a static shot and the other one was like the fireball cutscene which i just made it track the fireball the funny thing yeah. is with the fireball cutscene the actual camera just follows the fireball i didn't time it at all i just have i just coded the camera just follow the fireball <laughs> yeah as i didn't even code it scene. yeah yeah and then the garf the garf climbing one is just a static shot and then it just goes downwards so there was no filming required so those ones we didn't really care about yeah I won't say I'm shocked because I'd expect nothing less from you guys, but I am very, very impressed at how like good Dragon Pit was. And I think a lot of people share that view. Thank you. I appreciate that. I sure. hope it was the event of all time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely up there. If it, if it wasn't already, then it it's definitely is now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have, uh, I uh, before recording this podcast, I decided to remind myself of the update video. And I just, I want to know who came up with the amazing update video, because that is just, it was so informational so helpful like <laughs> I, just, I love that. uh um i, I took I on I, sorry you gone i think i had the original idea of just making like a fake out update video where it just like has the intro then or like I just the one has, like a whole lot of screen. nothing yeah, and then really i think cool. and then, but danny put it all together and came up with the specific text and ideas i believe yeah uh, i was kind of like the the main lead marketing for this uh, in terms of the videos like all six videos plus all the six like game teasers plus the update video plus the trailer obviously the trailer was like collaborative effort uh Kelton and i actually storyboarded that like with drawings yeah at Gekka's um, house right we did yeah, that at Gekka's house yeah, yeah it was um but like all the teasers were kind of just me alone kind of just in in the shower thinking like what's something funny I could do that would because the thing is between the trailer and the event we didn't want people to forget about it or the hype to die down right we needed something that would keep the hype up so I had the idea of uh, making teasers actually the idea started because I was taking a shower and then I was thinking about like um imagine Pandora's box did like an interview with players and then i started imagining like what would happen if we asked players their opinions on sg and i specifically remember like this was actually what based the entire idea of that sg teaser was like if i asked chaos would he even answer the other questions or would he just glaze sg for like a solid two minutes and i was like wait that would be really really funny <laughs> so like what if we just made that a teaser but i was like it's kind of weird as a teaser to do an interview so then i thought what if each of the teasers has their own like theme in a sense so that's yeah. yeah so we did like we did like an old style commercial for gauntlet we did for sg it was um it was like the interview everyone loved that one uh, for uh hyperdrive it was like 
uh, what's it what's it called analog horror analog, analog. yeah um the hades speed happy run. porn yeah speed run <laughs> speed run was a fun one to make on. <laughs> i wanted to do like a like a like crappy trailer you know? like, cra- like crappy movie trailer that was yeah like 2007 for. trailer for like yes yeah, so, like <laughs> almost like what you see of like a yeah. michael bay parody you know that's what i was going for um and then what else was there what's the myth of the game um hades havoc and Lockout, which was temple, temple, uh, yeah temple lock temple lock was more lore focused that one was more about like the lore of the map and then um hades havoc we just wanted to kind of show as uh, originally my plan was to show as little as possible my plan was just just do like a 30 second video of almost nothing right just like show some scenes kind of like you know you know the you ever watched the hades havoc teaser i would have to refresh myself but i do remember yeah i, I mean uh, i kept up with all of them so i remember watching it i don't yeah, really remember it, how it went it was it was the one where it went over all the dead games kind of like in a it had some detective music and it went over all the dead games and then there yes. would be random cut-ins yeah so all those cut-ins if you piece them together is actually what my original plan for the video was but i thought that was kind of boring so i was like what if we fake it out by making people have no idea what the last game is so i was like okay let's do this like detective style this video of showing all the dead games like guys maybe one of the dead games is coming back and then and then fake it out again with trials of fire being like oh maybe it's trials of fire that's gonna be the game <laughs> and but i did want people to have the idea of it being a puzzle game and obviously like we did want people to think about haunted havoc because a, a lot of people who would think about haunted havoc every time they think about it they'd be like no they're not doing that they're just trolling us they're just being mean um but that like we wanted the to update video too we actually we, yeah we literally we wanted to implant seeds of doubt into people's heads because of we knew how much um haunted havoc was loved and how hyped people would be as soon as they saw the text hades havoc people would, would scream right that's what we wanted so that's kind of that's that's what i was going for with the those last two teasers were specifically just kind of just to fake people out and make people think haunted haunted havoc i have searched <laughs> far and wide high and low all across social media i'm very confident in my question here and it's going to be very embarrassing if i'm wrong <laughs> why doesn't pandora's box have a youtube channel uh, like there's a need for one, really. I mean, yeah, we, don't, it would, we, we just post them on my own channel, the update videos. Like, I guess update videos. Like, if we wanted, we could make shorts, I guess. Um, well, we'd have to get someone like, else to do them, probably. I don't think we I, have time. I mean, time. I, I could do no, them. you could, I'd, maybe, yeah. I, I don't know. I'd t- I'd have the time or motivation to go and make, like, a short every week. <laughs> yeah, uh, we know, all know how long that rookie's video has taken, buddy. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I promise, I promise. <laughs> but, yeah, like, it's, um, there's just, I don't know, there's just not really much that we would post. Like, maybe I guess the teasers would have been cool, but I feel like almost all of our audience is on Twitter. X the everything app. Uh, <laughs> so, like, really, there is just nothing that we need. Like, I've thought about it 100%, but I don't know. There's, it, it's really just update videos, and that's it. Was it I, yeah. I, mean, I, was, I was thinking it to myself, so I was thinking about, like, Block Wars and Mayhem and Mania and all that the mm-hmm. other day, right? I was thinking, like, I wonder why events don't capitalize on, like, the more update videos and then, like, maybe, like, little things about games and then top 10 plays. Like, I I, I kind of always wondered to myself why events don't do all of this Amazing. on their own channels. But then you <laughs> yeah. just get someone to just do it, right? Time, you right? just hire someone to yeah. hire. Yeah. Uh, we don't even, honestly, to... we don't even have to. Like, there is, there is people like you saw i don't i don't remember what channel it was it was like the an best. mcc channel um that and did like a video of like all all hades havoc gem locations and puzzles oh. and they actually just wanted <laughs> yeah. the gem locations because nobody got it but it was like like we don't really even have to do that like i think you get to a point where people just do like top 10 plays for you and it's like that's cool because then you're also giving back to the community instead of us doing like top 10 plays which we could and then you know we could capitalize off that but in the other sense we can let the community make those videos and they then can choose their own top tens yeah like they can choose their own top tens that can spark discussion among themselves and they can also profit off of you know like talking about our event right so we're kind of giving back to the community in a sense well i feel like if we made like a top 10 we'd have to like objectively be correct in the top 10 (laughs) yeah exactly. which would be the uh, pandora's box top 10 we could do like top 10 fails (laughs) or like top 10 fails would be pretty easy actually but like like, uh... there's there's definitely (laughs) some plays that are like pretty near objective like best plays but then like it's all like top 10 per event is that's more of a subjective thing and if the official pandora's box is making a top 10 then people will kind of take that as the word of god yeah i think top 10 fails would be funny though i think number one is probably r and sg bro Stu and colby on the last dragon's pit hyperdrive at the very end bro oh my god 
funny. Beautiful clips. And also, uh, just doing Hades Havoc escape room. <laughs> oh god, that was- you just watched I think that it. unironically might be worse than R falling into lava. Like, that, I think that actually might move up to number one of all time, just because of the fact that it impacted the whole team. Because R kind of only trolled himself, right? But I think True. that actually impacted the whole team, so I think that actually might have moved up it to was number so one. funny, though. His stream, he was so- he just looked so clueless. Yeah. Like, he was just staring at them, and they were just, like, fans. Like, he was like, what's going- they're, like, yelling at him, what do I do? And he's just not answering, he's just watching them. It was so funny. Bad for Cub Ben, though. <laughs> like, high key. <laughs> Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's what I mean, though. Like, just that you can do funny things like that that you're interested in. I, I don't know. I just feel like events could capitalize more on doing their own kind of videos about their own events yeah. on their own channel. Oh, like, I, I understand the whole viewer thing, because, I mean, I do it with all things MCC. I do top 10 plays for MCC while looking at doing other videos for it. So I know what you mean, but at the same time, I've just, I guess I've just always wondered. Like, for instance, Inside MC, the last Inside MC event, we did the top 10 plays on Inside MC. We're most likely going to mm -hmm. do it for the Mania event as well. So, mm -hmm. my, I mean, yeah, I 100% agree with you. I think it just comes down to like uh, getting the people to do it, and it's like the the time commitment. Indeed. What were your? I, I mean, you've technically already answered this for Zendor, but I'm gonna ask it again, anyways. If you guys had to pick one game from Pandora's Box, Dragon Pit specifically, what game would you choose? That's like your favorite game, or one game if you had to own, if you only got to play one of the games. Hey, Zavik, I'm okay, sorry. Yeah. I think you're gonna get the same answer for everyone. I think. I think I'm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with like a little bit of. A, kind of a curveball answer because I think Hades Havoc was by far the most fun game to watch and 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 I think as a conceptual idea was so I, I think rewarding and I don't know it kind of and validating I guess because you put so much time into one project and for it to work out like that it was was really awesome to see but I think the most fun project, havoc. I know right but I think the most fun project to work on in the entire thing and the entire event was for me Temple Lockout I think Ooh, yeah going to because Gega also so Gega Lord um DJ Gega Lord a character in Pandora's Box Dragon Pit but also a builder for the team um he also lives in in the same city that we do Calgary and. And I think that what what made that project so special is I actually went to his house for like four days and we just had we, we called it like boot camp because in in August we needed to finish Temple Lockout, Speedrun, and Gauntlet. All the builds in that one month. And I remember we just like we locked in and we just worked for like four days straight, like from literally sunrise to sunset on that building project, on top of also like recording all the early voice lines and like everybody thought the voice lines were gonna be so cringe. Oh my god. Like I remember I when did. Wrote the dialogue. Everyone was like, "This is gonna be so bad. The voice lines are gonna be so cringe." And I remember I was like recording it with with Gega, and I was like, "Okay, okay we gotta make these not cringe." <laughs> He's like, "Okay, I got you." And he records, and he's such a great voice act. And we get the lines, and I and then I, I mix them and do like the vocal production and stuff like that, and we send it out. And I think like that alone, like his voice lines alone, made everybody realize that oh shit, this is actually not bad, you know? Yeah, that Sorry, actually was that, that was swear. my incentive. The that that changed out my perspective. I was like, I, comp I don't know why I never thought of the idea. Oh, wait, Kelvin could just mix up our voices to not sound stupid. Yeah, you know, just put some vocal production, some reverb in there. It sounds way better, right? And then so, yeah. like, I think it was just that little thing and that boot camp. You know, not only, you know, that me and me and Gega become much closer friends because we were, you know, like, I was at his house with his family and that was amazing. Um, but also just working together. And, and it was such a collaborative process of just being like looking over to like his screen, you know, on the, in the same room and being like, hey, I really like this, but I think you should do that. And he's like, okay. And he would look at my screen and we kind of like collaborate. And then all the builders would be in the VCs too, because they would just, you know, we were on all day, right? And then everybody would hop in and, you know, we'd have like six builders working at a time. And yeah, it was just an awesome four days. So I think that was probably probably the best memory of the of the entire uh, development experience for me, for sure. What was some of your, what was, if you had to pick one individual favorite moment from Tension or Dupe? It has to be like, it, it doesn't have to be like, uh, from the event oh. itself, it can be either a great moment, it can be a funny moment moment it can just be something that's like as soon as i said that sentence what did you think of if I do? the first thing that came up to mind was was, was diamonds <laughs> hades havoc finale. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it was so funny it was so it funny. was seriously funny. you got the whole squad laughing pretty much <laughs> literally everyone i think i think on rewatch feinberg playing gas blast just giggling like i just loving the game <laughs> i thought that was just awesome have I, you I think seen the that. curry way clip on when he's in the crow cage cliffs and he has to if you don't know, if you don't, or if you don't remember Orbits, um, Cage Cliffs was the game where the pots would kind of shuffle around and you had to track them with a gem and then choose choose the one with the gem. Yeah, I've seen the, like, the Corey yeah. clip on Twitter. Yeah, that 
clip that was is cold. probably also <laughs> like obviously i didn't i didn't watch any players perspectives i was i had like screen open in the background because I, I wanted to like translate for the team what was going on with that uh, with that team too. but um but i didn't watch that until after the event and i thought that was such a funny clip well then also i think another thing too if i remember back was when saber's pause line was <laughs> for the first time everybody yeah. just loved that they like they couldn't believe that we had lines for every game for pausing and then like shane tried to get the pause lines out of every other <laughs> game the because they thought it was afterwards. rigged too because what they didn't obviously at that first moment they didn't, it didn't click for them that we had every character with a pause and a disconnect line right so um so people like at first were like wait did they just script this pause like why is <laughs> yeah, there a we... slime playing no it's not scripted well i mean it is scripted yeah. but it's like it happens when yeah. an actual pause happens or disconnect oh so yeah, this, since this is coming out after genesis that means we can leak the fact that um hades has a three minute rant as his pause line and yeah, we get has... to hear it in Genesis. Um, that depends on well, if they we'll, pause. <laughs> we'll find out. I mean, it's three. Yeah, we'll always, we'll, I mean, we'll always release it like later for people who want to hear it. If, is, well, I think I, all of the voice lines are being released, right? Yeah. Something I'm about it is that YouTube channel. all the all the voice lines are said like through the like the subtitles in chat. Um, the three minute monologue does not have any subtitles. It straight up just says, "I'm not writing this." Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it just I'm says, not paid "Just listen." <laughs> Yeah, I'm not paid enough for this. I think one says, I'm not paid enough for this. The other one just says, I'm not writing any of this down. Just listen. Something. Yeah, fair enough. So well, unless any of you have anything else to say about Pandora's box or Dragon Pit, then I think it's time for the Twitter questions. Did it, any of you have anything else to say that you wanted to, or...? I think that covers it, yeah. I think we've done a decent job, I guess. You know, some more, right? I'm amazing. <laughs> right. You're a great host. Thank you. Right, Twitter. Here we go. Oh, boy. Uh, so, first one is just from Danny. It's already a question. They just said that their <laughs> ugly ass is front and center. We made it, chat. Just, oh, just my skin. Point it's out. A, so beautiful. I actually got the order in the tweet right as well. The color ball, Danny, and Rosendo, which it was. It's color ball, Danny, Rosendo. That's so, cool. Very proud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Rosendo, they said, my mind Craft character looks exactly like me, so you know. <laughs> I actually don't oh, yeah. have to you be fair. Do you see it? Like, cause it, I based it on Aragorn from the Lord of the Rings or whatever, and it's so funny because I am like, I cannot grow a beard to save my life. I could never do it in a million years because got like Asian and Scandinavian genes, so it's like no hair whatsoever. Um, <laughs> but my character just has like a full beard, and I find it so funny that like I could never do that ever. And so I always say that like my I look exactly like my character in real life. Totally, I think totally. you do. Yeah, the red eyes and everything as well. So. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think it's quite accurate. Right, so, the actual first one comes from Jokana san Hello, Jokana. Jokana does my shorts, so... CPC Caster Gold. Who also for was real, a player. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gold. <laughs> Insane sub. How much attention slash resources would you guys say Groint gives to each of its projects? PB, Combat Court, etc, etc. We actually didn't even bring up Combat Court. It's very nice. Yeah. Well, Combat Court we're associated well, with because um, it's not wasn't made by us. It was made by Steinwolf, but we help support it when needed, like with the tournaments. Mm -hmm. And also giving it a place to advertise itself in our server. Yeah. It's so it's more of like a of second party development. development, I guess you could say. Yeah. We're the publishers. I, I, yeah. I would say that like, I mean, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, um, but... I think it really depends on them, like, and what. Yeah, one hundred. Like, I think there's no real answer to that for Dragon Pit, for example. Like, I I ran a lot of like counter push balancing and map design and stuff like that for that project, but I dropped literally the entire project, including playing it, because I used to be like addicted. <laughs> so I like would play that every almost every week at, at the very least. But now, like when Dragon Pit came up, I think it was like full throttle on Dragon Pit, and we dropped pretty much every other project until like a little bit in July when we like posted another cpc but then besides that yeah we were just like fully into one project so i feel like for us it's kind of like we put our maximum effort into making the project we're currently working on the best it can yeah be. the next one then comes from abby when is pandora's box island well 2027 confirmed <laughs> yeah that's, that's true 2027 next question i will hold you okay no, i'm kidding but anyway no, so um no, no jokes there, sorry. <laughs> most of it is the fact that i think a lot of the games on a public server would just not be special anymore like if i look yeah. at the game roster right now I like i mean sg chalice chase and sg i guess could work but chalice would like make it boring in the event Gauntlet would make it boring in the event 
have the lockout, which just make it boring. I mean, Colosseum you could easily recreate if you wanted. You can't run Shots of Fire or Hades Havoc for sure. Yeah, good luck with those ones. <laughs> Unless you made it like a speedrunning contest. I guess exactly. Void Down, oh, if you no. want to recreate it, go ahead. Cool. I don't really care, but... Uh... Actually, we do care. Please don't. <laughs> yeah, don't. But no, don't host it publicly and invite our players, really. Um, I mean, jumping med too is just parkour. So it's not really anything recreatable. Child's um, Chase could I mean, be fun. I'll just matter mania. It you know, could be, yeah, but I mean, yeah. I think when it comes to boring. public games, we kind of rather just put bigger projects like Counter Push out as the public True. game rather than like our own Pandora's box event games. We'd kind of just rather have like re very a admittedly a lot of the games I feel like wouldn't really be replayable in a public context. Like I mean sure yeah. we, we we could say that we play Chalice Chase for hours. Would we really <laughs> play Chalice Chase for like more yeah, than an hour honest. or two for like for a week? If Event games yeah. work because of the fact that you play them so unoften. So having a, like Chalice Chase, well, it's such a fun game to play. If if I had to play that game for three plus hours, I would get so bored. It's just it would just there's not that yeah. much you can do. I don't know how people can play Sky Battle so often because I don't think there's a single event game in existence that can be played to like like that much because there's just not that much to it. Haunted Havoc. The only exception would possibly be Jumping Mad too, but that's mostly you would get bored of the hard. level. You get bored of the levels, not the game play really in that yeah, case it would, so it would still be the same issue so i i feel like I, I think what like mcci did with like the parkour where it's like viewer or like viewer submitted parkour i think was really good because it made the game like kind of feel special so I th in theory we could do it a viewer generated jumping mad to or void bound <laughs> but like would it really be that fun i mean probably would be for a little bit but i feel like it just wouldn't really be worth maintaining i feel like and then it would degrade the actual event i feel like when it comes to public games we'd rather stick to games like counter push that are like extremely replayable like counter are still replayable many years later yeah, and it probably yeah. Yeah. it'll need an update soon ish probably yeah. coming by the end of the year or next year but it'll it's like replayable forever and i feel like we'd rather six games like that that we know are going to be replayable for a very exactly. very long time and have so much depth to them rather than event games that can kind of like just burn out pretty quickly public eye next up is chaos 21a what is the biggest goal for the grunk studio slash pandora's box team moving forward that is actually a really good question i think it I think it more pertains to each of us individually, I would say, rather than the full collective. Because I think when it comes to Grunk Studios, now that Dragon Pit is over, I think we're kind of going back to our normal like projects, like our almost like our normal schedule, which feels a little strange. I'm not going to lie, because I think like when I now like after the event, I kind of feel like weird because i'm not working as much because i'm like yeah so much of my free time is now available and i'm like this is weird like what am i what am i supposed to do now you know sort of thing now Where, exactly exactly and and so i think we'll probably go back to to doing some work on counter push because our our community there like i mean amazing like coolberg and and um hi-fi pokey finn a lot of the avery me a lot of the players who kind of have kept that community going um through the this competitive server that they've been running have been kind of on life support <laughs> to a degree without our our like development because we haven't patches and we haven't maps content so i think just giving a little bit of like love to that game for sure would be something that we're planning on and, and i think we've already talked about like we, we definitely are have considered making uh, another big event in the future but like i said it, there, there would just have to be certain conditions met for for that to happen but i think that's mm, could really always my opinion. counter push dragon pit <laughs> which rivals reach out to us we're open counter push <laughs> contenders dragon pit and it would be imagine you're in the final the best of seven and after the first game on uh, nunala islands suddenly nunala islands gets blown up and then you have to defeat um Groink. <laughs> and then all 10 players have to team up on team growing from 2021 yeah wait for real oh my crazy. god oh what if you did like a final crazy. like fortnite boss battle yeah. you have to defeat a giant a giant danny and kelson and their squad <laughs> we're following up with doggy doggy ppps i'll do you one better i'll do you one better yeah um so it's a twitch rivals event right live in person mm -hmm. twitch on 2026 final two teams right they come up against a massive dan clancy all right and oh then God. whoever does Bro. deals the most damage wins five thousand dollars oh my gosh yeah, yeah we, we can even like royalties. we can even like take a power outage 
Like, just fake a power outage for, like, after, like, the first round of whatever, the ending. Just fake a power outage in, like, the, in the player area. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, quickly turn off all the lights and monitors. Yeah, just fake a power outage. players? Oh, that would be so awesome. It's like Ariana Grande, but better than Fortnite. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> the next one is from Evil Alex. How was it like to make the musical segment in Dragon's Pit? I think, I think we already touched on that a little bit. I guess more for, like, um, a timestamp here. Is what I was asking. Yeah, I think I think the the musical segment. I think I could go more in depth into like the production of the song, um, because that was definitely a really interesting process. Because I had never written like any lyrics before. I mean, maybe like for like some random like Mad Verse City rap battle or whatever, but like, <laughs> nothing, nothing substantial. And so for that process, I it was very cool to write a musical number. It, I had a lot of like inspiration from like Disney musicals, like Friends on the Other Side and stuff like that. And and I just kind of wanted to to create a cool theme, but honestly, it wouldn't have been uh, possible without, of course, um, the vocalist Joanna Lee. I mean, amazing uh, vocal talent, and and uh, Johnny HT's cousin uh, Corby Day likes coffee, um, who who did the announcer segment uh, in the song. That was without those two, and then of course, um, without Danny and Isaac really um, carrying the the cutscene and doing the the models and the subtitles and you know making it all work you know i think it was a really collaborative effort on making that segment happen um we just thought it would be so cool you know just to like have a musical number in the middle of an event and clearly the players thought it was pretty awesome too so yeah you we were the that, first I ones to do it i believe we were yeah yeah first first ever musical segment Chal- if if uh other events want to do it you know unless you count go ahead xx probably singing in the middle of mcc but <laughs> subject to opinion i guess uh the next one then comes from tussin they are asking if they can see Uh-oh. their family now, Danny. Specifically, Danny. Um. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know, man. They still got another thirty years in the contract, so sorry, man. Next question. Well, that was actually the final question. Fun enough. So, oh, well, guess you'll questions. find out in thirty years. The rest of the questions we pretty much asked. So there's no point going yeah. over again. Um. But yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Before I do the other thing, though. Us. I always like to give this opportunity for you all to promote yourselves. I uh, will do individually, and then you guys can nominate who promotes Pandora's box. So just in alphabetical order here, uh, for anyone listening, where can people find you, Palabot? To be honest, I'm really only on Twitter and active on Discord. I mean, I don't really use social media or make content anymore like I used to. I used to stream like Minecraft games and stuff all the time, but now the best way you can support me is just by playing on my servers and enjoying my games, really. Or our games, really. That's the best way you can support me. Oh, there we go. And if you just send me any links or those or whatever, I can slap them in the description. If you remember. Just my Twitter will be good. Danny? I'm on Twitter at Danny Picacho, D-A-N-N-Y-P-I-C-A-C-H-O. Um, I occasionally post there every, like, once in a while, not really much. Um, also, <laughs> Captain no- mentioned my rookies video. I promise it'll come out one day. <laughs> I know I haven't uploaded a YouTube video in probably, what, like, two years, I think. Um, I have actually. I have been working on it. It is it is fire. I'll release that eventually. It's going to be so good that Block Wars themselves will, will pay me for it, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, 100%. besides that... <laughs> Besides me, yeah, um, I uh, I always ask people to uh, if if you're interested in in five v five class based games like Counter Push should try. It's it's such it's such an amazing game, and once you really learn it and get into it, it's it's so fun and addicting. Yeah, it's a complete public server too. So like, if you have yeah, the IP, you can play anytime. I mean, you probably like, do you, oh. should we plug the IP? <laughs> should we plug the IP? Yeah, sure. <laughs> It's probably better if you join the Discord so you know when people are playing. Yeah, yeah, join the Growing Studios Discord. That's that's probably yeah, the link best in the thing. description. Where everyone's probably. at, all the cool people are there. <laughs> yeah, send me the link and I will put it in the description. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm in the Discord, but it's just easy if you give me the link. Yeah, I got you. And for anyone who's wondering what it looks like, if you go to the live tab on Inside MC, we've actually casted it. So if you genuinely want to see what some of the games are like, you can watch me and Jogana and then just me in the end yap over the games. There you go. So and uh, Rosendo, I haven't forgot about you. Your turn. Yeah, so um you can you can find me on YouTube uh and, and Spotify and Apple Music under Kelton Stucky. Um and then you can also find me on Twitter at uh at Risendor and as well as um on, on other platforms uh such as YouTube, you can you can find me under Risendor as well. But that's more for just like my main content, not not as much my musical content anymore. There we go. They're the Hannah Montana of our age soon. You'll see them singing some <laughs> beautiful songs. Under the a new Koji yeah. Kondo. <laughs> new Koji Kondo. And, uh, who, who but is... I can sing terribly. 
And who's promoting Pandora's box? You. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, no. Fair enough. Also, sorry if I've gotten quiet. So my parents have gone to sleep and I have to be up at like 3 a.m. And it's currently 9.30. No so I use context. It's the way I'm whispering <laughs> now. Um, yeah, good. If you want to check out Pandora's box or if you want to watch Pandora's box, Dragon Pit, at least a replay, you can check out their Twitter at Pandora's box mc mc i was getting to that you just didn't let me finish sadly i was definitely <laughs> uh you could, you. you could also check out their youtube channel color bolt because that's pandora's box uh <laughs> and join the discord grunk studios there you go which will also be linked below. So you can find Grunk Studios for everything. Pounder Bush Contenders, Pandora's Box, uh, the next product, project that they're working on that will be announced in January. So, there you go. Was that was that good promotion? Yes. I think that was amazing. Yeah, everyone stay grunking out there. Okay, okay. No, don't actually do that. <laughs> make, make sure to wake up and grunk every morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, because no, because literally, because it's literally just the sound a goat makes in French. Like that's it. According to French literature, the the sound of a goat is groink with two dots on the eye. <laughs> yeah, stay groink. Yeah, that's that's accurate. Stay groinking, guys. <laughs> All right. Stay well, with, stay that, with that being said, that sadly brings the end of this amazing inside MC. Uh, thank you all for listening. Stay safe. Don't eat too much bread. Groink the day away. <laughs> Pieces. <laughs> See you. See you. See you.